fundamentals of alternating current so in alternating current as the name suggests the voltage is alternating in direction so that's why we have a positive half for the voltage and a negative half for the voltage mm. and here you can see that there is a phase difference between the voltage and the current right like they are not in the same phase like the waves are not in the second all the times. Diagram, right? for a resistor there is no such issue resistor is very simple more voltage there is more current ohm's law is valid so there so here in this case the voltage and current are perfectly in phase they have the peaks at the same time valleys at the same time zero at the same time but for a capacitor okay. the voltage is leading by 90, the voltage is lagging by 90 degrees so yeah, that's a pi by 2 phase shift the voltage is lagging current is leading inductor is the mm. other way around the current is lagging voltage is leading mm. so this kind of phase okay. shift is what is represented here u the equation for the voltage is u not sin omega t so u not is the amplitude so amplitude here is like let's say 1 but in real life it's going to be something different i will show you in the next slide so let's say the amplitude is 100 so then it's going to go to plus 100 then minus 100 plus 100 minus 100 sin omega t that's the sine wave and omega is going to have the angular frequency which is 2 pi f where f is the frequency in hertz and t is time period frequency is 1 by time period Hmm. and current is i not and that the i not is the amplitude of the current amplitude by 2 sorry amplitude by 2 amplitude is like peak to peak no 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 i was right in the beginning amplitude is from the mean level peak to peak we will look at in the next slide and hmm. i is i not times sin omega t plus phi and this phi is the angle between the two waves like the in the in the position of the waves so just look here in this point at 0.02 seconds the voltage is at the peak and the current is at zero so that is a pi by 2 phase shift and that pi by 2 you can put here okay but uh, we have to determine that by looking at the diagram no we we, we will usually okay. be it will be given to us or you will have to find it from calculation diagram we we don't do in this course at least and not this, right now uh, in inside the in uh, like the equations it's omega t t is the on the time right it's just the time the not time moment. period not some property it's just real time like at, so if you want to find the value at 5 seconds you put 5 seconds at 10 seconds you put 10 1 millisecond 1 millisecond so that t is like just the time at which you want to find the voltage okay understood okay just a moment okay just for one moment please Yeah, you can carry on. Sorry for that. It's fine. So we looked at the phase shift angle, phi, and uh, current and voltage are changing. So these are the extreme cases where it's fully capacitive, fully inductive, like coils or inductors. But usually that's mm -hmm. not what we have in real life. We have some mixture of them, like LCR circuit or something else. So. the phase shift is not perfectly 90 degrees or uh, plus 90 or minus 90 it will be something smaller mm. so as the voltage and current uh, current are varying we cannot give like an absolute value for voltage at this instant so instead we commonly use root mean square value mm. so one of the reasons we go for root mean square is that like, root mean square is like a statistical method so it's the square root of the average of the square so let's say i'm talking about root mean square voltage so i take u square at every instant so that u square will be like much larger so like that 
Mm. But since it's squared, the negative will also become positive. Like minus two square is four. So something mm. like this, and then using integration, we find the average value, and then we take square root, and that will give us the RMS value. So, because if we take just plain average, what will happen is the positive half and the negative half will cancel out. So we so don't. So this VP is peak voltage. Right? I, I, yes, it's peak voltage. Yeah, that's the amplitude. So this uh, U naught that you saw here, that is VP, peak voltage. U naught is VP basically. Okay. Yeah. And I naught is IP, right? For current, yes. Similarly, and we will use RMS for current also. Everything is RMS in terms of AC. We never talk about absolute values. It's always RMS voltages. And the other reason why we don't take average is usually power is like let's say for a resistor P equals V square by R. So we really want this V square to be correct and square of the average is not going to be same as square of the RMS value because they are different. So we go for RMS because we often are working on those powers and this V square by R has to be valid. So we go for RMS value, not average value. So just remember this conversion factor, RMS is peak voltage times 0 0.707, which is the peak mm -hmm. voltage by root two. Okay. For average as well, you have a conversion, but you will never use it. So not, not, mm -hmm. in, not important. So why we need this power factor? Yes, there is some phase shift, but what is the point of it? So this diagram shows it very well why we are talking about this. So, so if you just multiply the, like the voltage RMS and current RMS without thinking about power factor, it's like saying this whole mug of beer is full of beer, but that's not true because this upper mm. part is just foam. There's nothing there. Mm. So this apparent power is what you're getting when you just multiply the RMS voltages. But if you want the real power, which is shown here, the active power, then you have to multiply cosine of the power factor. It's like, like you, let's say you have a force in this direction mm -hmm. and you have a displacement in this direction. Then we take dot product to get work done. So F bar dot S bar. So which is F modulus F modulus S cos phi. Similar thing here. We're trying to find the power is like rate of work being done. So we do this uh, kind of dot product which you are doing with these phasers, which are like vector representation of this changing voltage and current. We will look at that very soon. But this is the this is a very important thing in AC, the real power, the actual power you are getting. Let's say we have a motor, you are giving some amount of current and voltage, you know the RMS voltages. The mechanical, mm. let's, if, if its efficiency is 100%, then the real power this P real which you calculate using P apparent times cos phi, that will be the mechanical power you get. And the other power is just flowing, it's like recirculating kind of. It's like it's going to the going to the motor and coming back. So it's not being actually used by the motor. And cos phi, like not phi, but the whole cos phi, that is power factor. So like mentioned before, phasor diagrams. Phaser diagrams are a way of representing the voltage in a real imaginary plane, complex plane. And this phaser is rotating because the voltage is changing. So it's changing between real, imaginary and real. So, and it's a method of representing real and apparent power. It can, and it's also, it's very graphical. Everything is drawn to scale. So it's actually meaningful and not just a representation. So let's look at the case here. If you do V times I, what you get is apparent power. If you do cos phi, then you get active power. If you do sin phi, you get reactive power. Mm. So usually what we have is, this is real. If there is only, let's say, uh, the current is along this direction and I'm looking at how the voltage is changing. Mm. I'm not very sure if it's that it's like that or the other way around. Oh, one moment. The inductor, the current, 
the current is lagging behind yes okay okay so current is let's say is going is along this direction is real but the voltage is not perfectly real so let's say the voltage is actually represented by a phaser like this that means that there is some kind of inductance which is dominating over the capacitor so let's i'm just giving an example we have a resistance capacitance inductance sorry l h is the unit and no capacitance if they are all in series mm. then you have to add the the impedances in ac we don't deal with resistances we deal with impedance because these capacitors and inductors are also impeding or slowing down the flow of current but not in a very similar way to a resistor so the generalized term is called impedance impedance is z and this x is reactance uh, for capacitor and inductor impedance reactance are the same thing but in ac we we have this impedance thing and if you take look at the phasor diagram the resistor is along this direction there is no phase shift created inductor creates a positive phase shift capacitor is a negative phase shift these two let us i will mirror it there then it's like that so you have to subtract and that is the difference that difference is what you are actually feeling because the capacitor and inductor they have opposite effects so one of them they, they cancel out hmm so that is the effective direction of voltage with respect to the current and then you have the power factor so we don't need these many details for drives but i'm just giving some background one thing you should know is purely resistive load has power factor 1 it does not affect the current in any way and they are perfectly in phase with the voltage now let us look at i didn't understand what do you mean can you repeat again a resistor has a power factor of 1 because the voltage and current the voltage and current are perfectly in phase so cos of 0 degree cos 0 is 1 okay 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 because you see there is no phase shift so zero radian phase shift cos 0 is 1 mm. yeah when we are, when we are trying to power equipment we often use three phase power especially if the power demand is high let's let's say like you go to the dentist you sit on the chair and the chair is electrically out, uh, actuated and those motors they are three phase because they need a lot of power and why do they go for three phase to get more power if you have a single phase then what's happening is at the peaks you are getting more torque so let's say i'm drawing the torque curve here at peak you're getting more torque and then the torque decreases and then this is also creating torque but the coil has gone to the lower half so it's still like useful to us so it's like it's like that and that means that there is a lot of variation in the torque within one cycle of rotation so the average torque will be around there but if you have this three phase and all the three phases are active and giving power then the av- the, the variations in torque are much smaller because the average voltage if you take of these three combined or if you do rms it's much higher so it's much more consistent and that means with the same device more or less slightly modified construction you can get more torque because you are able to give a more consistent power so they are using okay. three live wires one live wire per phase and then there is one neutral wire grounding like earthing is done locally it's not through the grid so the grid is carrying just four wires and in the and the three phases you have to notice they are 120 degrees separated so that it's perfectly balanced the first phase let us say is in this direction phase are representation second phase like that third phase like that 120 degree separation and they are all of equal magnitude mm. so four wire setup is very commonly used but for motors three wires just the three live wires are sufficient because the coils are correctly balanced it's like all the coils they have similar resistance inductance and so on we, they don't need this neutral wire so now we have three wires if you have a load balanced load there's two ways of connecting it one of the ways is the star connection 
in which you are using the neutral wire each resistor on one end is connected to the live wire one of the faces and the other end is connected to neutral in delta connection there is no neutral connection and the, just the three are connected to each other in a triangle and the three ends of the triangle are connected to the voltage in these two cases the power being delivered is different the voltage that is that is being supplied to each element is different and lot of things are different between these two so let us make okay. one thing clear what is line voltage line versus phase <coughs> in terms of voltages line voltage between <coughs> between two phases <coughs> which means between two live wires but a phase voltage like the voltage of that single phase itself so between phase and neutral and the line voltage is greater than the phase voltage i think the conversion factor is given here is root 3 so line voltage is larger than phase voltage by root 3 mm. so let us look at this resistor here here it is just getting the phase voltage because because it is connected directly to live and then it's going to the neutral so between live and neutral phase voltage But look at this. Let, let's consider the resistive loads. Yes, for now, this resistor is connected between one live wire and another live wire, so it is getting U L. Let us do a small thought experiment kind of thing here. Let us look at the power made by this resistor. In the case of star, what is the power dissipated by a resistor the formula is v square by r so u phase squared by r in delta it is u l squared by r and the three resistors are the same so let me just compare one resistor then you understand u l is basically root 3 u p h right so u l square is 3 u p h squared by r so just look the same resistor just by changing the connections i'm making three times more heating power than in the previous case you notice the difference hmm there are the three in delta yes then it's it's the same right so uh in real life as well for a motor in the uh, if you have it in star connection let us say it's giving you 1 kilowatt of mechanical power if you change it to delta connection it will give you 3 kilowatts of mechanical power <laughs> so which is better right because from the same motor you're getting more power of course this is not free power and it's not free energy it's consuming <laughs> more current to do this of course Okay. But I'm just saying, with the same construction, you can get more power if you do delta connection instead of star. Just one question, uh, just to clear myself. Yeah. This U P H is is the phase voltage. Correct. And the phase voltage is between the neutral and the live. Correct. Uh, okay, and. the normal voltage the line, line voltage. voltage so there are basically two kinds of voltages yes. line voltage and phase voltage yes and obviously there is no voltage for neutral so right? so yeah voltage of neutral is zero if you look at the like a big power sockets you will see the voltage is labeled as 230 volt slash 415 volt okay especially if you have like big power sockets maybe mm. i can show this Not sure if I have one. So what you are looking here at, like, is this powerful socket, 400 volt? It says 400 volts. Why doesn't it say 230 volt? You can think. That is because the mm -hmm. 230 volt. What we are looking at is phase voltage. Because usually we have these one phase devices in real life. even though the supply is three phase 
your normal wall socket will just have one face being supplied to it like shown in the image here Where is it? yeah so here is just one face being supplied the uh, and then you have neutral uh, neutral is in blue here and everything in yellow but the supply is just one phase but for motors you're going to need three phases so they are giving line voltage here which is root three times of supply voltage so if you multiply 230 with 1.732 which is root 3 you get 398 which is 400 volts so that's why they say 400 slash 230 okay okay yep <coughs> so some yeah. some real life thing not 415 i thought it was 415 Okay, I can't remove it. Fine. So, let us look at more detail in the star connection. Like mm. I mentioned previously, the load is getting line voltage by root 3. Usually in questions, what they are going to mention is the line voltage, which is going to be mm. nominal voltage. So, the, line, the load per phase is, like the voltage of the load is line by root 3 because it's u phase and i load is i phase because the current flowing through one phase is going to flow through the load as well and in current there is no such thing as line or phase current because current is just something you are you can measure in one wire itself so what there is no reference needed whereas for voltage you need to compare the voltage of one thing with the other thing so that you get a potential difference you don't look at absolute voltages ever in real life. It's always a difference. You need two points. But for current, it's just absolute. It's in one wire. So we can get that. So just I, one question. The slides which you are showing. Yeah. You can you can access that in the form of uh, fundamentals of AC and asynchronous motors. That is okay. that is the most updated version of these slides. Yeah, because I didn't have those. So just yeah. Oh, sorry for interruption. We, we previously calculated the overall RMS power. So we just add the powers because powers, we are looking at RMS already. So there is no phasing between the powers. They are all at the same time. So 3 UPH IPH cos theta where and that's just power factor. And if you write it in terms of, in terms of line voltage, it's just divided by root 3. That's all. Power factor for each load would be the same if all the loads are identical. And usually in these kinds of connections, we try to keep the loads as balanced so that there is no uh, like uh, imbalance and then there is some current flowing in the neutral wire which you want to avoid. Now with okay. delta connection, like mentioned before, the load voltage is equal to the line voltage, but the current in the load is equal to one by root three times of current in a wire. Because you see this wire, is giving current to both these loads. So the current in one load is 1 by root 3 times of the current in the wire. And in mm. delta connection, it's even more important yeah. that the load so is current balanced. current is dividing itself, right? Sorry? Current is dividing. Divided, correct. Okay. And overall power, again, we're adding the three powers. So U line, I phase, and you have I phase by root 3, and then you multiply 3, so that cancels out and gives you root 3. Mm -hmm. And like shown previously, the delta arrangement is making more power. Okay. Now, let us look at asynchronous motors. They are also known as induction motors because there is no field. Like previously, we saw in DC motors that there is something to create the field. Right? You had the, sh you had either the shunt or the wound field and there is some field coil to create this field or you have permanent magnets. But in induction mm. motors or asynchronous motors, you don't have any such thing. It's just based yeah. on electromagnetic induction and you just have the AC supply. It was invented by the great Nikola Tesla. The construction is very simple and there are no brushes or slip rings. And that is the one of the best advantages because the number of components that are wearing down and need to be replaced or maintained are decreasing. It is self-starting in nature, whereas some motors are not. Like if you have a one phase asynchronous motor that is not self starting, you have to give it some mechanical input to start it or something. It's very widely used because of its simplicity and cost, cost effective nature. The RPM that it's making is not linked to the frequency of the input. That's why it's called asynchronous. Okay. 
because the shaft is not rotating in sync with the frequency of the supply voltage. In this course, we are focusing only on the three phase squirrel cage type induction motors. There are more types as well. There are also single phase induction motors. We are not looking at that. So, how does this work? Like? Yeah, then we look at the next slide. So, construction. You have two major components. One component is the stator coil. So, this is the stator coil arrangement. And these two, mm. you can see it's one electrical phase, these two are another electrical phase, and these two make the third electrical phase. And together they are produced. So if you look at the effective magnetic field that they are making, initially it will be like this, let us say, because these three voltages are out of sync by 120 degrees, right? And as the time passes and these voltages go through their sine wave cycle, this effective magnetic field itself rotates. So it becomes like that and then like that, like that, so on. The whole magnetic field is rotating, effective magnetic field. All three coils are make, going to make some fields and they interact to give one e effective like resultant magnetic field. So that is the stator connected to power supply has pole pairs. So this thing, what we're looking at is two poles because you see per phase, for one phase, you have one pole on this side and another pole on this side, which is one pole pair. Usually it is the number of pole pairs per phase which are important to us, which I'll show you later in the calculations. Mm. And in the rotor, what we have are these uh, two end rings which have these rotor bars which are skewed. They are skewed so that uh, there is no locking or stalling. That's why it has the self-starting nature and is more uniformly distributed. And in the middle, and this is the main thing that is actually rotating. Here the magnetic field is induced. It, it opposes this change in the magnetic field. So it tries to rotate along with the magnetic field. That's why there is rotation. And to strengthen the magnetic field, we fill these gaps with the disks that are going to fit in these gaps. So we don't leave it empty like this. So the rods are important, yes, but we fill the gaps between the rods with disks and have cutouts so that the magnetic field is stronger. I don't have that image here. Maybe I can show it. Mm. Maybe that, no. Ah, okay, here. What you're seeing exactly, these uh, skewed things, those are the rotor rods that we saw previously, and you can see the gaps are filled. And if you zoom in, you will see that they ha they're actually made of many plates which are laminated, and this is made mm -hmm. to avoid eddy currents. Eddy currents uh, create losses because mm -hmm. there is current induced within these uh, plates itself and that creates losses which we don't want. Mm. Okay. Okay. And then you have the housing which is holding everything. <coughs> Properties okay. like mentioned before, cheap and reliable and used very widely, long lasting because there are no brushes. There is no control equipment needed because it is self adjusting. The RPM changes as per the load within certain limits. But this comes at a cost. It is difficult to regulate the speed. So if you have some amount of load and you connect it to voltage, it is going to reach whatever speed it will as per the motor parameters. You cannot control the speed because the speed is not linked to the frequency. Even by changing the frequency of the input, you cannot control the speed. It okay. consumes high power at startup. It's inefficient at startup and low RPM. So if your motor is overloaded and it's running at low RPM, it's going to make a lot of heat and it's going to like basically damage its coils very fast. Efficiency is lower compared to synchronous motors, which is why electric vehicles, they are always using synchronous motors. And th those motors, they have efficiency of like excess of 98%, something like that. It's very easily you can see such efficiencies. More than 98%. Just huge. It's like having a gear. One gear pair has an efficiency of 98%. Whereas a diesel engine has 40%. Petrol engine, 30%. <laughs> So there is this term called slip, which is important in asynchronous motors. It's basically describing how much different the shaft RPM is compared to the RPM it's supposed to have as per the frequency of the voltage. 
uh, we will look at how to calculate it but first notice that the current is relatively constant until it starts decreasing uh, at like near the end point the torque mm -hmm. here is the pull up torque it initially drops and then it increases again this point it's the maximum torque point it's called torque breakdown breakdown torque mm -hmm. but we don't run at this point because look the slip is huge Uh, mm. you will look at the next in the next slide you will see why slip is bad uh never mind but at, if you operate if you operate at this point because of the slip you are going to have a lot of heat being generated and the and the current is going to be the same so the voltage induced U ui kind of is uh, lower lot of heat is being made so you don't use breakdown torque for long time you can have this case where for short periods of time you overload your motor so that it's operating beyond its nominal point that's all right as long as it's within the limits of like the cooling because the primary constraint with these motors is the ability to cool the coils of the motor so if you keep running it at this high power level it's going to accumulate a lot of heat and if you never yeah. let it like let uh, decrease the load and allow it to run at low uh, at lower torques it won't be able to get rid of the heat it has made Okay. Star delta connections they are made conveniently using such kind of junction boxes. This is the arrangement of the co the coils. This phase U V W are the coils, and uh, the electrical connections are R S and T. These are the three phases. If you connect them like this, like and you create a neutral, this is star connection. If you connect them like this, like if you have wires here, you have a delta connection. Okay. So for soft start, you can use such a setup, and then it's in star. Then once it has started up, and it's running at some RPM, then you change to delta so that you have the full power of the motor. Okay. This n naught is the synchronous speed. It is sixty because sixty minutes per second mm -hmm. times line frequency divided by pole pairs. This this n naught is going to give answer in RPM directly. Okay. Sixty times F L by P, and I told you how pole pairs are working previously. So if you have mm -hmm. four poles, usually they are like poles per phase, but it's understood. So they just say four poles. Then it's two pole pairs, so P equals two. Slip. Like there are then two two pole pairs mean there are four coils. No, there are four coils for each phase, so there are twelve coils in total. Wait, wait. So two pole. Pole pairs mean like this one is two poles. Yes, because you see, for this coil, look at the same color. They are on the same electrical connection. It's like in series these coils. Mm. No, I guess they are in parallel. Not sure. They are in parallel probably. Hmm. So, uh, what I'm trying to ask is like, um, uh, like, uh, uh, will they tell us the phase, like? Can like in this example you have written two pole three phase. Yes, so it is one pole pair. One pole pair. One pole pair per phase. We that's all what we are always using. Pole pair per phase. Okay. So okay. so they okay. never mentioned this in electric. It was very confusing for me as well because yeah. I thought there are so many poles. Why do they just say it's two pole pair, one pole pair? I didn't understand. Later, I looked through the books. Even the books weren't that helpful to me. But from people, from other professors as well, when, when discussing, I learned that it is the number of pole pairs per phase. Per phase, okay. Yes. Okay. So notice one thing: with higher hmm. pole pairs, the synchronous speed is decreasing. So if you know that you are going to run your motor at low rpm if you know that your load needs low rpm go for more number of pole pairs so pole that pair. the synchronous speed is lower okay okay and it's closer to your actual required rpm the slip is defined as n not minus n by n not where n not is the synchronous speed in rpm and n is the current like the actual shaft speed in rpm okay three phase power is one phase power times root 3 claus equation this is quite important where we will use it so frequently this th this this you will almost never use this the third equation torque is t breakdown times 2 divided by s 
this is the the slip at that specific point compared with the slip at breakdown so breakdown torque mm. and breakdown slip are very important like uh, parameters of the motor okay uh, like i mentioned previously there is this case of overloading the motor because it's, mm. if you take like the overload which means you are going above the nominal torque rating but the limit is of course the breakdown torque in general it is less than two times the nominal power and then there is this thing called duty cycle which is the load duration divided by duty duration so if you are running your motor in general for one hour but you are using it to if you are using it at high power only for like 10% of this time then your duty cycle is 10% and this is the average power versus duty cycle but we are not looking into detail on that so let's do this example question i will solve this question okay so don't get uh, scared by the large number of parameters <laughs> or data given <coughs> hmm Uh, okay so data is given nominal power 200 kilowatts frequency 50 hertz normal in europe it's 50 hertz in the us and parts of japan it's 60 hertz nominal current 343 amp hmm nominal voltage 400 volts look at this triangle marking it means it's delta delta nominal rotational speed 1488 rpm cos phi n this is the power factor that i mentioned can, can you mute yourself yeah okay cos phi n is 0.86 power factor at nominal stray reactance of rotor is assumed as constant but is always do that you don't the, the question doesn't have to mention that within this course that's the approximations we are making So first step is to calculate the number of pole pairs. So what do we know? N not equals sixty uh, times F divided by P. Thing is, we don't know N not, so we are, we will take this nominal rotational speed N N. So P equals sixty times F by N N. Which is sixty times fifty hertz divided by fourteen eighty eight. Why are we taking nominal uh, RPM? Because that's the only RPM we have. We don't have any other RPM. So uh, the mm -hmm. thing is, But, I will mm -hmm. go back to the slides. I will show you why we do that. Good question. look at the nominal operating point the slip is very small like like i the slip is only 7% because the difference between the synchronous speed n not and the actual speed is very small so you can approximate this to be like synchronous speed for now in order to get the number of pole pairs because you know the number of pole pairs is a whole number you can have yeah, one yeah, pair yeah. or two pairs yeah. you can't have 1.7 1.8 pairs so if you get 1.8 you know there is two pairs because you know that you are taking the nominal rpm and the actual rpm is larger so it's two pole pairs hmm that's the same thing we do here 60 times 50 is 3000 3000 by 1488 is a bit larger than 2 3000 by 1488 is 2.016 but there is no such thing as 2.016 pairs so it's just it's just two hmm So you know it's two. So P equals two. <coughs> And now, we, now we calculate we. the nominal slip. S nominal is uh, N naught minus N by N naught. What is N naught? It is fourteen eighty eight. No 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 no. N naught is fifteen hundred. Because we go back, we apply this P equals two back in this equation. So n not equals f times sixty by p, which is three thousand by two, fifteen hundred. 
Okay. So it okay. feels very wrong, right? You get this P yeah. from this equation and you put it back in. It works because you have this approximation happening and then you put the actual number back in. So if you see something which is near 1500 for a 50 hertz load, it's going to be two pole pairs. Hmm. Hmm. And if it's near 3000, okay. it's uh, one. But be careful. You, you uh, don't assume this because you have to calculate and show that you know how to do it. And also, if it's 60 hertz, then the values are slightly different. Then it's 3600 instead of 3000, so on. So 1500 minus 1488 by 1500. If you calculate this, the answer is like really small, I think. 0 0.008. Exactly. Yes. Nominal torque. Uh, we, uh, how do you think we can do that? Any suggestions? Nominal torque. Yes. Uh, nominal torque. Wait, wait, wait. We have the power. We have the nominal current and we have the nominal voltage as well. No, you can't do that. This is not a DC motor. <laughs> what you can do is first law of drives. First law of drives, what yeah. is first law of drives? 2 pi n. Yes, exactly. P equals 2 pi n times t. Use this to get torque. Okay. That's all. <laughs> and if you write first law of drives, the professor likes it whenever you write this equation. Okay. Efficiency you can calculate in the next step. Yeah, then then we will have the like. So this nominal power is output power. Okay. So if mm. you so T equals P nominal divided by two pi into fourteen eighty eight by sixty. If you solve this, you are you are getting thousand two eighty three point five newton meters because the power is quite high how much is it it's 200 kilowatts it's a very large motor mm. like uh, 200 kilowatts that's like 230 horsepower so you can imagine how much power that is it's more than any average car engine it, you're already looking at little bit on the performance side so like Wolf, uh, Volkswagen Golf, the normal one might have 150, 180 horsepower. The GTI version will have 200 or 230 horsepower, something like that. So, very powerful mm -hmm. motor. Mm -hmm. Efficiency. What is efficiency? It's output over input, always. Never make that mm -hmm. mistake of having input over output. Unless it is uh, volumetric efficiency in uh, hydraulics, then be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so, P mechanical over P electrical. P mechanical is P nominal. Hmm. P electrical is UN IN cos phi. Okay. Hmm. So, that will be... 200 into 10 power 3 watts divided by how much voltage 400 volts how many amps 343 343 amps and cos phi is given as 0 0.86 they didn't give us the angle they directly gave us cos phi value cos phi is unitless quantity sorry p electrical is not just that there is also a root 3 i'm forgetting Right, mm. because it's a delta configuration, we use the equation for delta and the voltage is the line voltage given. What is the value of this? Uh, I, wait, 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 so you multiply. Let me show the slide quickly, then you can get it. Where is it? Uh, is it here? Here, yeah, this delta side. connection. Root 3 times U line, which is U nominal, like mentioned before, I phase cos theta, cos phi, same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just do that and then you have the efficiency. Hmm. So now you can solve the next question. I, I have one question. Okay. Uh, can you go to... The, the slide uh, name formula yes 
this one. This la second last equation, can you please explain it again? I'm not confident that this is actually correct. I think it's actually times three, not root three. Okay. So what does this mean? Like P three phase? P no, this like just it just means if you calculate the power of one phase of the motor and then you multiply by three, you get the power of the whole motor with the three phases. That's all. If I want to calculate like but two this, phases, this is completely irrelevant. No, why would you ever do two phases? What's the use of it? One phase makes sense because you analyze one coil maybe in detail and then you get that. But in general, for the course, this equation is completely useless. But in but okay. theoretically, that's the background. Like in the delta connection, that's what I used. Mm -hmm. So for one okay. line, like for this one resistor, let us say, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have to be a resistor. Sorry. Mm -hmm. P equals U L I phase U L because it's just line voltage times cos phi. Mm. But the load current is I phase by root three, so I have to remember that because let if if I'm taking just the current across this resistor, it's I phase by root three. So that is the power mm. of one phase. Clear? See, in general, for, for AC, P real equals U I cos phi. In this case, the U is U line, the I is I phase divided by root 3 and cos phi is still cos phi, that doesn't change. That is the power of one phase of the load, but there are three loads, right? So we multiply that with 3. And that's why this 3 and root 3, they cancel out to give root 3 in the numerator. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Understood. So, mm -hmm. you want me to solve I will show you question, question. number 2? Yes. <clears throat> okay, the answer was 0 0.978 for efficiency. Question 2, very similar question. Okay. You can share your screen. So it's our skin breakdown slip and we have almost everything for this torque breakdown. There is no torque. Okay. We have so we can calculate torque. If we have the poles. Okay, so <clears throat> okay. Hmm. You just make the correction there instead of root three, it's three. Where? Yeah. The second last equation, it's uh, not root 3, it's 3, because it's meaningless. You have power of one phase and then you just add the 3 power, so it's just into 3. It's not root mm. 3. So, uh, for this question, I think... Uh, uh, it's, it's very direct it. applications of the equations. But there is no... Okay, I, I have to calculate this. Yeah, sequence. exactly. But then I don't have the torque. No, no. Go back to the question. Hmm. You have the number of pole pairs. Yeah. You have the RPM, nominal RPM, and also the breakdown RPM. So initially, mm. use the nominal RPM to get the number of pole pairs. Here you can see it's near 50. Okay, sorry, pole pairs is given. I forgot. Mm. Mm. So for now, don't think about nominal RPM. You have breakdown RPM. You have number mm. of pole pairs. So you know the synchronous speed is 1500. Use that to get the breakdown slip. SBD. Just use the slip equation. N naught minus N by N naught. 
and in this case n will be n b d which is given to us as eight twenty seven point five. And n not would be n nominal. No, no, n not is synchronous speed. Calculated. Will not is synchronous speed, so I'll just calculate it by. Okay. Sixty If you are writing the units, do one thing: write sixty as sixty seconds per minute, so that the n naught you are getting is one by minute. So sixty is sixty seconds per minute. Okay. Fifty is correct. Fifty hertz is fifty one by second. And sixty is sixty seconds per minute. Yeah, then the units perfectly cancel out. You get one by minute, which is RPM. what is expected RPM, right? So thousand five hundred RPM. Starting to look so long. Class equation T equals T breakdown times two divided by times divided by S by S B D plus S B D by S plus S B D by S. Yeah. We still have to calculate S. You actually know it. Think about it. At start, at start up, the shaft is not moving. It's at zero. So slip is one. It's full slip, max slip. Okay. So slip is one. Take slip as one, and then you can solve. and similarly on the opposite end of the spectrum at synchronous speed slip is zero you can get this by calculation also but you can know it as well it's just properties It is correct, I guess. What is the answer? You got? Yeah, it's correct. Close enough. Numerical approximations and such. Then he is asking for nominal torque. So, so nominal, nominal torque, you're just repeating the same procedure, except that you find the nominal slip and and solve. Hmm. Thirteen. So one thing you should have on your cheat sheet is the class equation for sure. Done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, one zero seven six. So yeah, and then substitute. Torque is basically T B D multiplied by two over.
Yeah. And nominal so, power is just first law of drives. Mm. Take that from the answer. Nominal efficiency you calculate. Because th this is the easy part. Don't don't have to repeat that. Two pi n times t. Yeah. Nominal is thirteen uh, fifty six. Mm. Correct. Thirteen and this is sixteen. And then we have nominal efficiency. So nominal efficiency is P out over P in, which is P mechanical. So 40 multiplied by 70 out P electrical. Delta, delta. Look at the delta connection. Yes. P. P total. This one. Yeah. Here I have clearly specified its line voltage. In the question, it's implied its line voltage. Sorry for my handwriting. <laughs> I mean, it's for your reference, right? No problem. <laughs> UN is 380. So you see, now we are we are basically done with AC asynchronous. The next question. Yes, I I cannot use IN, right? I have to develop. No, uh, you can use IN. You can use IN. I can use IN. Because that question is also using I N. That uh, that equation is also I N. I phase. I phase is I N here. Because so, there is no line current, phase current. There's just one current. It's phase current. So I so phase is I N. So what does this represent? That's the current per coil or like per load. Because you have three sets of coils, right? Each set, each coil is getting one by root three. But you're looking at the whole motor, so we use the I phase directly. So what I've noticed is, if there are any tricky questions, if there are, they are Mm. Even that, they are not that much tricky. They're just only slightly harder, and they are usually on the mechanical side or on linkages. Electrical part, I think it will be very straightforward, like we see here. Uh, yeah, I got efficiency at zero point nine three five. Yeah, nine four, close enough. I, <clears throat> the problem is, uh, I wanted, like in the end of the course. Mm. Like because in my exam, what he did was he combined drives like uh, CVT transmissions and AC motors. Okay, so sure, that fine. portion totally blowed my mind away. Did <laughs> you know, have this question like, with you by any chance? No, 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 yeah. it was in the exam, bro. Okay, <laughs> and I was like, What the fuck? <laughs> what will I do now? Mm -hmm. Because first he started with the torque and power and everything and then he 
ke le, like he wanted speeds and different gears and then suddenly there was uh, ac motor involved and then there was like i was like totally blanked and he took my cheat sheet away as well <laughs> why <laughs> because the problem was i wrote it on my ipad and then i printed it up and he was like ah. you cannot do that because you have to write it on your paper because okay. obviously on the ipad you can without write the cheat sheet man this is too hard there's so many equations exactly. in this course <laughs> exactly that that was like i i then after that i didn't solve the paper at all <laughs> because i didn't knew any problem. understandable understandable third question try to solve it it's a little bit different type of question it's not like question 2 so that's why i, I kept it I, i was thinking should we like move on to uh, move on to the, the why i have this question is it's different from the other question and it's similar to the second question from wonfield motors so if we know how to solve okay. this you can also solve that so just look at this question okay okay ac is motor is connected to 50 hertz network the nominal speed is and the nominal torque is okay the breakdown torque is calculate the breakdown speed okay so we have and i'm just writing the formula yeah yeah sure so he is doing this to this Okay. <coughs> We don't have any pole. Breakdown torque is given. Nominal torque is given. Nominal RPM is given. And slip is. Um... Okay. So. <coughs> okay. What is not given? Yeah, pole pair. You can find out, right? Like just like we did before. Yeah, so we can do this. Sixteen BFN. Right? Yes, yes. Here, of course, it's two pole pairs. It's almost fifteen hundred, so it's definitely two pole pairs. You will get two point one or two point zero eight, something like that, and then you approximate it as two, because it's two. I should convert thirteen fifty RPM into no, no, no conversion. That conversion no. is the sixty you have there. So just keep it directly. Two point two. Yeah. Two poles. So two poles. Okay. So we can calculate the nominal slip. Nominal slip. Because n naught is fifteen hundred. Yeah. We we will calculate n naught. Yeah, but it's fifteen hundred. Sixteen to fifty by two is fifteen hundred. Okay, fifteen hundred minus thirteen fifty. So fifteen hundred minus thirteen fifty. Now we have this. Okay. We don't have S B D, but at S B D the torque is given. The and nominal torque is also given. So you have yeah, one so equation, one calculate. variable. We can calculate this from here. Hmm. Do that. So T.
did I do it wrong? No, no, it's correct. It's correct. I was just looking at it. Yeah, it's correct. So, if I. And then, then uh, the bottommost term can goes to the numerator if you simplify. So two S B D S exactly. So the only variable which you don't know is S. You're trying to find S basically. It's the same thing. <laughs> why? Why? Why did it happen? Sorry, actually, you have made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yes, yes. No, what are you doing? It is. It's just. It's just S square plus S B D square. There is no. There, why will there be a third term? Why is it S square S B D? Because uh, if you just if cross multiplying, it, right? So it's just S square on the left side, S B D square on right side. Denominator is S S B D. That's all. Okay, if you say so. Why do you like think I, it will be like this? You just cross multiplying. Because if, because if I, uh, I, I, I was. Like in my mind, I do it like this: the denominator, right? In my mind, I do it like this. Okay, and then what is the denominator? Ah, oh, that's wrong. Why? Because it's not correct. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> Okay. You show me then. <coughs> A by B plus C by D. I cannot add them because the denominators are different. So what I do? A multiplied by D divided by B multiplied by D. Multiply divided by D, and here I will multiply divided by B. Yeah. So it gives me A D plus B C plus. Divide by divide by B D. In our case, we have S by S B D plus S B D by yes. S. A D A times D S square okay. plus so, other way S B D square divided by S S B D. You also gave me a <laughs> lesson on maths. <laughs> Okay, so so now it's clear. Yeah. All right. Continue. Huh. So I have to <clears throat> basically. Um, So you realize what we have here is a quadratic equation, mm. and you have to solve that. Don't be scared of that. Just solve it. You will get the answer. Maybe now you can start substituting the values so that you are less confused. Yeah. Okay. Good approach. Keep going. <laughs> yes, yes. Keep going. Keep going. It's not that bad. Okay. Now some so values. The, the, so this this will be okay. So this will be the and quadratic here term. don't no units. You don't have to worry about units. I Break guess even if you write them, it will be correct. Yeah, write the units. It's fine. 
because you have s square in each term s is unitless torque is newton meter so all three terms have newton meter so just the equation if you write 215 s square yes sbd you you already know sbd so substitute that also tbd no no Because sbd also you know aren't we calculating for sbd scroll up oh sorry yes okay s we know sbd we don't know you're right yeah. so um, this term is there yeah, now 2 Into s is zero point one. Yeah, but two fifteen s square. So. And just one, and t v d t v d is four sixty. So this is one point. No, I'm I, I'm just writing it in quadratic form. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> and t is the two is zero point. फिफ्टीन <laughs> this will be right okay that's exactly wrong because you know the breakdown <laughs> slip is going to be a large number sorry 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 this this, this will be correct sorry, sorry i will give the reasoning behind that so next time you will remember so because the slip is big i think yeah bigger big it's big yeah, but yeah. even if the values are closer just check which one is larger than the nominal slip we know nominal slip is 0.1 this 0.019 yeah. is less than that so it cannot be that so it has to be 0.5 So your feeling should be greater than this. Yeah. So similarly, the 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 wound field wound field DC motor has a question which is involving quadratic solution. Solve that with the similar logic. Which question? Uh. Yes. I mean slip. When you have the slip, it's basically the same thing. From slip, you can immediately get the speed. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. to finish up the question do that so i just use s b d equals to yes <laughs> don't try to mix steps do it step by step you will not get confused so if you try to do two steps at once it happens yes correct correct so Yes. This is seven fifty. Exactly. Yep. So you are saying I should do the wound, wound so the electric drives V three. This is just the AC motor. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is one more question. Okay, not in wound field. It's in shunt excited. Second question of shunt excited. Yeah, yeah, the Is centrifuge, it? the centrifuge. Yes, that question. Similar logic. <coughs> so here you're solving. You have two equations, like a system of equations, and you're solving for them. One of them is exponential. The other one is linear. Yeah. 